Hello, I'm trying again. I will explain a bit more in the description bar why it's a bit late, but I have tried upload it, uploading several times and YouTube hates me. So, basically, a baby boy is here. He was born on the 17th of November at 2.08 in the morning. Apparently, like, having surrogate baby boys in the early hours. He weighed in a whopping 10 pounds. I told you he was massive. Um, his head circumference was 38.5 centimetres. Very, very big. Very big. Um, and apparently, he's 55 centimetres long. So... Yeah, he was huge. And it felt it on the way out. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, yeah, the story is this. I had tightenings in the day. They were just Braxton Hicks, though. I'd been in the day assessment unit, you know, where they do the non-stress test, trace, whatever you want to call it. And it was showing us having tightenings, but the, she did say to me they looked just like Braxton Hicks and nothing to get excited about. And I was like, well, actually... In this pregnancy, I haven't really had any Braxton Hicks, so to me, this kind of is exciting because I forget the odd one. Like, if we were in the car for a long time, I might get the odd Braxton Hicks, but other than that, I just didn't get them. And all my other pregnancies I have, yeah, I've just had loads of Braxton Hicks and stuff throughout it from like 20 something weeks onwards. Sorry, this is driving me insane. I'm gonna super glue that there. Um, and yeah, so I was like, oh, okay. And then in the evening, it's like it would wear off and come back for hours, like the, the tightenings and stuff. And then in the evening, I start getting tightenings again. But again, they didn't really hurt. Or one or two of them were a bit like, oh, oh, no, I can feel that. But they were definitely not contractions. There is a huge difference between like the pain of a contraction and, and a Braxton Hicks. So I was getting quite frustrated. I was going up and down the stairs. I had a hot bath with Clary Sage. I did other things I won't necessarily talk about on here. Um, we did bouncing on the birthing ball. I did all fours. I did praying. I did begging, um, bargaining with an un unseen force. Various things to try and get this to turn into labour. And it didn't. And at one o'clock in the morning, I was fed up peed off, grumpy, miserable, and just not a particularly happy person. So I went stomping off to bed. I was really, really fed up, really aggravated. Um, and a joy to behold, I would say, at this point. I was going in, I was four days over. I'd never been this pregnant in my life. I was not happy. And as I'm lying in the bed, thinking probably quite dark thoughts of grumpy grumpiness. I don't know. I can't actually remember what I was thinking. I think I was just like thinking, come on, where is karma? Why have I not had this child yet? You know, what is going on? He needs to come out. It better be quick when it happens. In hindsight, that wouldn't have been a great thought. So yeah, I was lying there and I heard and felt this like click. It wasn't actually like a pop at all. It was like, it was really loud. And I was like, oh my God. I'm thinking either I broke his arm whilst laying here stationary doing nothing, which seemed kind of unlikely, all my waters just went, and that was a bit weird. So I was like, Darren, wake up. Did you hear that? He was like, no. I was like, uh, I think my waters are gone. Can you go and get me a towel? Now, I meant that when I stood up out of the bed, I didn't want to pour it all over the carpet and ruin the flooring. Um, like, ruin the carpeting. So he jumped out of bed, and he dashes off, and he goes downstairs. And I'm thinking, what are you doing? The airing cup is, like, right next to our bedroom. Um, but he'd run downstairs to get a towel, like a sanitary towel out of my handbag, because they had said to him... If it had said to me if I thought my waters were breaking to put that in just to see what it looked like because I thought my four waters are gone and they were telling me they hadn't when I was being checked I said you know I'd felt damp on a couple of occasions tiny tiny trickles nothing exciting nothing major and they were like no 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 it's fine in hindsight I'm beginning to think that maybe they had and it had been two days and I told them that they're gone and no one was really listening to me but that's a whole other rant I may get into in a different video um uh, but that would also possibly count towards explaining some of the complications we had after he was born. So um, I put the pad in, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, there's a bit of a green brown tinge. Meconium's in the water. He's stressed. Crap. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. So as I'm walking to go downstairs to get on the phone and stuff, I get my very first contraction. So I ring up the birthing centre and I said to them, look, there's meconium in the water. Um, do I come straight to you guys or do I go to central delivery suite? because uh, obviously I'd really like to give birth there, but I'm aware that this is meconium and therefore it's probably, you know, she said, no, no, come into a triage here and you may find that you're absolutely fine and it's not a problem. You may find that we have to send you across next door. So I was like, okay, fine, excellent. And as I was on the phone, I was having quite a few contractions and she said to me, but 
if you get to the point where you need to get in the car and you can't get in the car because she I had said to her like my mum's coming she really gets she did say when are you leaving you're leaving now and I was like no probably about 10 minutes because my mum's on the way over Darren had been ringing my mum while I was on the phone to central delivery suite um I said, well, if you don't think you can make it, if you don't think you can get in a car, because it might be really quite quick, you need to ring an ambulance, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, oh, she's been a bit ridiculous. I'm like, oh, no, no, it'll be fine. I'm so sorry, playing with my hair. Um, no, no, it'll be fine. Obviously, she knew way, way better than I did how this was all going to play out. <laughs> uh, I'm a moron. And I'm like, no, no, I'm sure it'll be fine. So I got off the phone. I'm waiting for my mum getting ready. And Darren says to me, right, let's get everything in the car. Uh, most things in the car. Grab your pillows. You get in the car and we we'll head off to the hospital. And I went, <gasps> I can't get in the car, there's no one getting the car, like, welled up, and I'm not a crier until this pregnancy, uh, previous pregnancy, and then I just cried all the freaking time, it was ridiculous, but, um, yeah, I was just like, no, you can't make me get in the car, I'm not getting the car, I felt like actual hysteria, panicky, uh, anxiety attack, almost, um, there was just, just no way, I was, I'm so sorry about the fringe thing, um, no way I was getting in the car, just, no. So he just looks at me like, he even admitted, he's thinking, stop being ridiculous, you're fine, just get in the bloody car. And I was like, no, no, I'm not doing it. And then my mum came around and I was like, no, I can't, I can't go, I can't go, I can't go. So he ends up bringing an ambulance as instructed by the delivery suite um, who contact the community midwife and they decide that they've got those guys all coming to my house. There was no way I was going to make it in the car. There was just absolutely no way. By the time all this is done, I've been in labour for like 20 minutes. And it takes about, what, 15 minutes to get to the hospital and then another five minutes probably to get to the ward. And yeah, it's just there, there is no way he would have not have been born in the hospital. He would have been born in the car or in the car park or possibly if I'd really, really clenched my bum cheeks um, and everything else down there, A&E. Uh, so there, there is just no way that kid was because you had to go in a and e to get into the hospital at that time the main entrance is closed there is yeah no way in hell that kid would have been born anywhere other than some really awkward place so we realized we're having an unplanned home birth at this point and the the paramedic guy came he was lovely he really was absolutely lovely and he got his gas and air out and was like have a puff on that my love that helped and i was like nope don't like it and he kept going go on go on it really helped and i was like nope don't like it because i thought no no as soon as i do it, i feel like i can't breathe and i get panicky and it makes me worse and i was already feeling quite out of control because um, at this point, the contractions like one after another, after another, after another, after another. They literally went up, peaked, dropped down so I could just go, <gasps> so like a five out of 10 and then straight back up to a 10, then back down to maybe a five so I could just gasp for air in between them. And there was about maybe 17 seconds at, at most between the peaks. Um, so it was really, really overwhelming. It was very hard. I had at this point pulled off my trousers and my pants and was just on all fours leaning against my sofa and because of the way my lounge is as you walk through the living room door there was me ass everything on display probably traumatized all the people that came in at my house that day but never mind um at some point don't ask me exactly who got here when i know my mum got here before the paramedic actually she came in was like oh dear so we're doing this here are we i'll put the kettle on because in complete seriousness as i said in the other video as well um if you're british we do make tea in all situations have a car crash you need a hot sweet tea. Have if you exciting news, have a cup of tea. Sad news, have a cup of tea. Something's going a bit wrong, have a cup of tea. So every mother in England, pretty much, apart from those that are like, you know, I don't know, alcoholics or something, they probably make tea too, actually. Um, walk in, she goes, I'll oh, put the kettle on, and off she goes to make tea. And she's calling into the lounge at this point, the paramedics here, do you want a cup of tea? And he's like, Oh, that'd be lovely, thanks, love. And I'm, you know, lying there. <laughs> tea no um i didn't mind i actually i was giggling to myself i the reason i remember this is i was internally giggling my head off about how very british we were but you know paramedics there daughters on all fours about to give birth in the living room completely unexpectedly at like one o'clock at this point it was nearly two in the morning and there's my mum putting the kettle on and making a cup of tea i love that woman i really do i love her she was absolutely fantastic she felt guilty though about being here when the parents were definitely not going to be here oh by the way we did ring the parents very early on um, after being on the phone to Central Delivery Suite and sorted that out, I believe I called Joe and said to her, this is it, my waters have gone. But it may have been Darren. I genuinely can't remember which one of us rang, which is weird. But it was me. It was me. I thought it was me. Darren's going, it was you in the background. Um, I thought it was me straight after the Central Delivery Suite because he was on the phone to my mum. But honestly, everything's like, uh, so I'm not really sure. That'd be my thumbnail. Awesome. Um, 
so yeah crazy manic thing um get back to it so i can keep this within 15 minutes of this one will actually upload to youtube we are all like in the living room i'm huffing and puffing and my body wants me to start pushing and I literally, I'm not in control of this. I'm clenching up and Darren said he could see me literally. It looked like, you said you, I looked like I was holding the baby in. Mm -hmm. I did not want to push. I do, it just, there was no midwife there. I just didn't, I, I wasn't alarmed, Friedith. So, um, there's me like trying to hold it in and then hear the midwife come in. And it must be some sort of psychological thing where all of a sudden you think, midwife, okay, I can push. And I start pushing. And he was born about, I think, about seven minutes after she walked through the front door. Walked in to see my ass on display. It was beautiful. And um, there's me pushing. And I remember she had a quick peek and she's like, well, he's not crowned. And I'm thinking he will be in about three seconds. And she's saying, can you turn over love so I can examine you? And I'm thinking, I can't breathe, let alone turn over. And I can't say any of this because I can't talk at all, which is rare for me. And this is still driving me insane, sorry. Um, and she's like, I just want to examine you. No, I was making all these weird noises because I was trying to say no and I couldn't talk. And then she's like, well, it's very wet on the floor. Can you lift your knees up so we can put cushions underneath your knees? And I'm thinking again, hi, can't breathe, let alone coordinate limbs. This shit is not going to happen. But I kept trying. I eventually managed to lift up my knees. They put cushions underneath me. And I think within about 30 seconds, his head was coming out. And I remember, you know, anyone's given birth, that burning ring of fire if you're given birth without painkillers, I mean. Um, I don't know if you get it with an epidural, and even if it wears off, I'm not entirely sure you understand the real fun of this. Take the epidural, take the drugs. It really hurts, and it really burned, really burned. And I remember thinking, this is worse than normal. This really, it, I, it just, I, it overwhelmed me. I could, I was not in control, and I don't like that. And then, so I obviously delivered his head. And that really hurt. And then she's like, right, another big push for me, love. Normally the rest of the body just goes, oh, and falls out. Um, but no, no, there was another ring of fire. There was another crowning sort of sensation. And it was his shoulders because he was so massive. And I remember thinking, ow, 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 this really, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm feeling a bit panicky because it wasn't like any of the other babies I'd ever had. And then she's like, another big push. And I push again and it's still burning. And it's still stretching me to my very limits. And I'm like, ow, 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 in my head. And then one more push. And then there was a, a, a very small one of his legs coming out. And that, he was massive. He was massive. I've never had a big baby before. It goes to show how huge a, a deal genetics are. Because he was gigantic. Um, so at this point, this little baby had been born and everything was just a little bit crazy. I remember just thinking, oh, thank God that's gone. That's, that's done. The burning pain's gone. I mean, and sort of turned around and they did hand the baby to me because his parents were nowhere near getting to us. And, um, Darren rang them and said, your son's been born just as he started crying sort of thing. And it was really, really nice. So they did know, like almost as soon as he was born, they knew. Um, and then we had a second midwife turn up and everything. And I will continue this story in a part two, which is what happened after he'd been born on my living room floor and what has happened since then, because it is actually a story. So, uh, well done if you managed to stay listening to me for the last, what, 15 minutes, I would imagine. And hopefully this video will actually upload now and I will film part two tomorrow, I think, if all goes well. Can't speak to you later. Bye.